Yeah, we're turning our attention now to football on the Sportsmax Zone. Action continued the CONCACAF Nations League on Thursday. And the late-night match saw Jamaica travel to Nicaragua and take all three points to top Group B in League A. An own goal from uh, Josue Quiano in the 32nd minute. And a Romario Williams strike uh, sealed what was an important win for the reggae boys. Head coach of the team, Steve McLaren, said he was proud of how his team played on the night. Tough game. The environment, I thought the crowd was fantastic, great atmosphere. That's what football is about. Um, it's a difficult opponent, uh, well coached, uh, possession based, created opportunities, I didn't quite have the finish. We defended very well. And on a difficult surface, which we've not played and not used to, um, I've got to credit the players. For the mentality because uh, everything's against you. I'm not saying the officials also, but <laughs> we had our moments. Um, so I'm pleased with the performance, the result, and um, where, we, where we are at the top of the league. We need to do a job on Monday and to continue the, the development of the identity which we have, and, uh, keep the spirit. Yeah, so Jamaica with a victory 2 0 over Nicaragua there. Our football analyst Leger Williams uh, on call for the match on Thursday night, and he joins us now to assess what happened last night. Now, before we get into a clinical assessment of what happened, just a general overview, Lige, on how you thought the reggae boys played last night. I, I think they were all right. You know, uh, nothing spectacular, but I think that it was a pretty professional performance. I, I don't think that despite Nicaragua having more shots than Jamaica, more possession, I don't think it was a case that the home team dominated the game by any stretch of the imagination. It was relatively even, but as Coach McLaren alluded to, the difference was the ability of both teams in and around the box, and I think that's what really told in the end. So I think all in all, it was an all right performance, another performance that you know people can say that it was something, they can see something building, something getting better in terms of the Jamaican program. So uh, I have, I'm not going to say I don't have any complaints, but I think it was a pretty all right performance. Yeah, Tyreek McGee made his return to international football last night and had some really good moments. and. Uh, afforded the Jamaica team some, some, some dynamics that we haven't seen a lot of in, in, in recent years. How impressed were you with him last night? Well, you know, I, I, I was on commentary with Donald Olive and you know, we all know what he calls, you know, Tyreek Maggie, Agent Magnificent, and I, we saw flashes of why he was given that nickname. I think Maggie was really good. Uh, he added, as you said, a different dynamic to the team. And when you think about it, Jamaica typically have pretty direct wingers, wingers that like to go at their man, not necessarily the creative type, cut in if you're on your half foot on that flank and try and just let things happen, those combination wingers. So I think it was a pretty good breath of fresh air to see McGee operate from that right flank and he was involved in basically everything good that Jamaica did from an attacking point of view. So it was an excellent performance and it was great to have him back in the team. Hopefully he can continue this form going forward because in Jamaica, at least, we all know how good Tyreek McGee can be. Yeah. Um, quickly, the coach team McLaren said post-game, we just heard him, that he was very impressed with how the team played defensively. Now, can you break that down for us? Because Andre Blake was probably the man of the match for Jamaica, which means that the defense was breached several times. I know that if you talk about defense, it includes the goalkeeper. So if he's talking about how good the defense was, he's probably making an all-encompassing statement that including the goalkeeper the defense was solid because it was a scoreless game for Nicaragua but I would suggest that the defense itself before the goalkeeper 
may not have been as tidy last night as they could have been. Well, I, I know you said quickly, but <laughs> I, this answer might be a little bit long-winded, so let me catch my breath. All right. So uh, I, I agree with him that the defense was good, reason being because Honduras had 17 shots. 12 of Nicaragua. them were... Nicaragua. Nicaragua, yeah. I beg your pardon. So mm -hmm. they had 17 shots. 12 of them were from outside of the box. So I think that their decision-making, them being Nicaragua, in and around the penalty spot was not the best. So I think the defense generally wasn't tested as much as they should have been. And Andre Blake, I think, yes, the saves were good, but I think he has a tendency to make saves look really spectacular. And I'm not saying the saves weren't spectacular. No, not that one, though. That was yeah, a yeah, fine yeah, save. No, no, I'm not saying that the saves weren't good enough. Yeah. All of the saves were really good and really efficiently done. And they needed to be done. I, I, but I think on a general scope, I think if you're not allowing teams to breach and create chances in and around your box, you have to give a lot of plaudits to your defence. So I think all in all, the defence was solid, but I had problems mainly with the pressing structure. I think that's where my issue was, and I said it on commentary as well. The first two games under Steve McLaren, Jamaica defended in a, the press with their high block and their mid block, 4-4-2, four, 4-2-2. Four, two, four, now, the reason why teams do that, it's something that's widespread in Europe right now, is to block the center of the pitch. That's efficient, yes, but obviously the weakness in that is that you allow a lot of space in the wide areas. I'm not sure if Jamaica scouted before the game and they realized that Nicaragua possibly could have a more threat in the wide areas, so they opted for a 4-2-3-1 mid-block and pressing shape. And I don't think it was the best personally because at several points throughout the game, it allowed Nicaragua to easily breach into the final third. Their centre-backs were playing balls between the lines really comfortably. So I think the pressing structure was generally off. It, it, Bobby Reed was mainly on their six, but if a midfielder were to drop to create a, an overload in that area, Jamaica were easily outnumbered. And I, I think that would be an issue for me. And it's a knock-on effect as well. I said it would be long-winded, I'm sorry. It's a knock-on effect as well because we saw Amari Bell, who is not called up for these friendlies due to injury, he was playing in the back four before at left-back. He's a natural, he can play centre-back, he does it for his club. So when he is in the team, the back, the, 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 the system that they used to build up, Amari Bell moves, drops, creates a back three, and that's how they build up with the other two centre-backs. He was not available. Greg Lee is more of a defender that pushes up. So they pushed him up, and then so they, got, they created that back three structure, similar to what we see from Steve McLaren's old club, Manchester United. Lati Baudere, the defensive midfielder, dropping in, in between the centre-backs, and then the other central midfielder dropping in to create a 3-1 base to build up in. This was not effective because when we lost the ball, when Jamaica lost the ball, Lati Baudere had too much room to cover, when we were time, when it was time to go into that pressing structure, because he has to go from the middle of the back three all the way up into midfield, and that's what created Nicaragua's advantage when they could zip those passes into attacking yeah. midfield. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, I say all of that to say the pressing structure wasn't the best that allowed Nicaragua to gain control at some moments. So I think that's something that can be adjusted. But the box defending in and around the box, I think it was a generally really good effort. Yeah, and speaking about good effort, Romario Williams picks up his fourth goal for Jamaica. Um, a quick comment on him? Yeah, I think he was fantastic, actually. I, I know a lot of people won't say that because he only scored one of his three chances and he, he scored the easiest one. But I think everything that you can ask for for a hold-up striker, a striker that is always available, always willing to link up, always willing to win those fouls, always willing to be a presence as well, I think generally Romario Williams... That was a fantastic game. I think that's a model of what Jamaica would like to see more often from Mikhail Antonio. Because if, you know, obviously, and, and Shamar Nicholson as a matter of fact, because obviously I've been on the show and compared those strikers before. But one thing common for both of them is that they generally lose the ball more than 10 times a game on average. Romario Williams only lost the ball eight times and he was called upon to hold up the ball and he did so in really spectacular fashion. Bro brought other members of his team into play and I think he facilitated Jamaica's attack really well so I think he had a fantastic game and I'm glad he got a goal to cap off that performance. Yeah and a lot of uproar about the referees and their decisions. What did you mean? Well, the, referee, the referees were awful on the day and it's not only based on 
calls that they gave to Nicaragua, but also Jamaica, because if we were to look at the first Jamaican goal, in no, in no world, in my opinion, that should count, because I, I've been on the show for quite some time. I've said it before, reaching back to when last season, when Arsenal and Newcastle had a game, and Joe Linton pushed um, Gabriel, I believe, in his back with two hands, and I've always remained consistent. Sir Lance, you have been watching, playing, covering football for quite some time. You know that if an attacking player or a defender has two hands in the back of an opponent, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, 95% of the time, that is a foul. Mm -hmm. And Demar Gray obviously had two hands pushing his defender, and he pushed the defender into the path of the ball, which caused the goal. I think if the game had VAR, that would have been chalked up. But even apart from that, Nicaragua got a lot of favorable calls. Jamaica got their calls as well. So I think it was a shambolic refereeing performance. But mm -hmm. thankfully, if, if you're a fan of Jamaica, if you're a, a, a part of the Jamaican population, you got a break from a part of that. So mm -hmm. all's well that ends well, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, the Jamaicans will tackle Honduras on, on Monday night. Honduras, a uh, potentially tough, well, tougher opponent than, than Nicaragua. Uh, based on their history and their current world rankings. Um, I know maybe some of the players who didn't play on last night's fixture may play this time. A lot of them overseas-based, and their clubs are very weary of how much playing time they, they are forced you know, to, to endure over a space of two or three days. Uh, what are the differences that you would look for for Honduras quickly for the Monday night game? I think the game will be even more intense, especially seeing how the last game played out, which Jamaica won 2 one I'm expecting Casey Palmer and Mikhail Antonio to get back into the starting lineup. And I think generally it's going to be a closer game. Jamaica will have to be much more efficient in midfield areas. That, that's a negative as well. I thought Jamaica was really poor in terms of their pivots in Latibodere and uh, Karoy Anderson. Uh, last night, so I think they'll have to improve there massively. I think Casey Palmer will help out in that, but I, I think Jamaica will definitely have to be on their P's and Q's in that game against Honduras. Yeah, one another um, Caribbean team that won last night was Montserrat. They had a victory last night as well, and I can tell you that so far today, uh, Martinique defeated Guadeloupe by one goal to nil uh, in League A, and in League B, uh, St. Martin, that's Dutch St. Martin, defeated Puerto Rico by three goals to two. Grenada and Curacao are locked at nil all at the moment. St. Lucia are at home to French St. Martin later tonight. That's 8 o'clock uh, local time in Gros Ilay. And uh, the St. Lucians looking to continue on their winning streak. Uh, thanks, Lish, for talking to us here on the Sports Match Zone. And reminder that you can catch CONCACAF Nations League action on your home of champions all throughout the international break. We go to break and we're back with more on the Sports Match Zone.